Hi children, how are you today? Today we are going to learn tense from unit number 5. Okay, tense plays an important role in order to communicate effectively. If you want to comprehend a sentence, you need to understand tense very well. Do you have any idea about how many tenses are there? There are three time marks, present, past and future, but four aspects. Simple, continuous, perfect, and perfect continuous. Let us look at the examples just now I have quoted. I am Selva. I go to office every day. I am working in that office and I have completed my breakfast. If you look at these four sentences, all the four sentences are in present tense. But if you look at the verb, all those verbs are in different forms. So now we are going to analyze and understand before we learn all the tenses, we must be aware of all the verb forms. Let us look at the verb forms. Verb 1, present simple. Verb 2, simple past. Verb 3, past participle. And verb plus ing, present participle. There are two kinds of verbs. For example, go, went, gone, going. If you look at all these verbs, each verb has a different form. And take another example, call, called, called, calling. If you look at most of the verbs in English, they are in regular form. I mean, you need to add only ed at end of the word in order to make verb 2 and verb 3 forms. But whereas there are only few number of verbs in English, they are irregular because they do not follow the ed adding system. Now, let us look at all those 12 tenses. Now you can see on the screen present, past, future. How can you see present, past, future? Like this, you see on the screen four present tenses, four past tenses, and four future tenses. You have a confusion, right? Let us make it clear. Past three tenses are simple. Simple present, simple past, and simple future. Do you guess what's the next category? Those are continuous tenses. Present continuous, past continuous, future continuous. And perfect, present perfect, past perfect, and future perfect. The last three tenses are present perfect continuous, past perfect continuous, future perfect continuous. I can see that most of you have got confusion. How I am going to memorize all these 12 tenses? Now I am going to help you to easily remember all these 12 tenses. Let us look at the lives of us. We are in school right now as students. After school, where will we go? We will go to college. And after college, everybody will choose a profession. And once you've got everything, education and placement, you'll be a parent and you'll have a child. Your life is settled. This is the normal lifespan of a person. So, you may think, what all these four life stages have to deal with the tenses? Actually, these four are clues to easily remember the sequence of tenses. School for simple, college for continuous, profession for perfect, the last one parent and child for perfect continuous. So, all these four clues will help you to recall all those 12 tenses. What are the verb forms of simple present tense? Already we have seen four forms of verb. 
verb 1, verb 2, verb 3 and verb plus ing. And which form of the verb you are going to use? You have any idea? Yeah, of course you are right. Since this is the first tense, I think you will guess correctly verb 1. But there is a small uh, thing that you have to notice. Verb 1 has another form also. You should add yes with the verb. For example, let us look at a word. For example, let us look at the word drink. Drink, drank, drunk and drinking. We are going to use only the first word drink for simple present tense. But what are the pronouns, all the pronouns? I, we, you, he, she, it and they. When you choose verb form, you will choose verb 1 for simple present tense. I drink coffee. We drink coffee. You drink coffee. He drinks coffee. She drinks coffee. It drinks coffee and they drink coffee. So, what is the difference? When you choose verb, you should add yes with that before you are applying it for third person singular he, she, it. I mean, whenever you use a word, your father drinks coffee, your mother drinks tea. But when you combine two persons, your father and mother don't drink tea or don't drink milk. When you combine two persons like your father and mother, the verb comes plural. We do not add yes with that. My father and mother drink coffee or tea. Let us get to the first usage of simple present tense. What is the first usage? you have any idea? Correct. The first one is habitual action. Before we get into examples, let us analyze the word habitual. What is habitual? What does habitual mean? Repeated actions. We do it every day. Let us list out all the habitual actions. I wake up at 6 o'clock. I get ready to school. I go to school. Every I go to school in the morning. I attend classes. I play with my friends. I return home. I watch TV. These are the things I do every day. So when you would like to express your everyday activities, you should use simple present tense. You understand? Okay. So you have learned one usage of simple present tense. That is habitual action. You can express your habitual action. Now you can see on the screen a graphic. That is days in graphic. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So in order to understand the first usage of simple present tense, this graph will help you. When you do something, as you look at in the graphic, something happens every day. Like I wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning every day. And sometimes I do something every week. I play on Sundays. I go to shopping on Saturdays. And sometimes something happens occasionally. Sometimes I chat with my friend for a long time. I often receive calls from telemarketing. So you can use all these adverbs usually, daily, sometimes, rarely, often. You can use all these adverbs of frequency to express our habitual action. 
You understand? Okay. And shall we move to the next one, next usage of simple present tense? Okay. Let us move on to that. The second usage we are going to see is to express permanent situations or universal truth. For example, we live in India. That's a permanent situation. And I work as a teacher. That is also a permanent situation. The sun rises in the east. That is a permanent situation. And it is also a universal truth. And she loves her parents very much. This is a permanent situation. And we need food to live. That is a permanent situation and truth also. So if you want to express permanent situations and universal truth, you have to use simple present tense. So far we have seen two usages. First one to express habitual action. Second one to express permanent situation or universal truth. Okay. And can you guess what is the next usage? Do you have any idea? Okay. I'll give you a clue. I go to cinema this evening. Can we express this in present tense? I go to cinema this evening. I mean, there are five, six hours to go to cinema. Can I express a future action in simple present tense? Of course you can do. That is why I insist all of you do not get confused with tenses and time. You can express a future action in simple present tense. You can express a near future action in present continuous tense. That is why I ask you to follow this lesson carefully so that you will better understand all the 12 tenses and why we need to use all those things. To express future event, I go to market this evening and my sister prepares dinner tonight and the train leaves at 7 p.m. and India meets Australia in the final. If you look at all these examples, these are fixed events like timetable. If you want to express something which you have something in your timetable, either it is schoolwork or your personal work or anything about uh, uh, tea, sports or any events, if they are fixed event, you can express it in simple present tense. So let us revise all those three. First one is for habitual action, your habits. Second one is permanent situation and general truth like sun rises in the east, water boils at 100 degrees C. And the third one, fixed events which are fixed and you will definitely do it and they are from your schedule. You understand all these three? I hope you will understand very well and you are going to use it. You can effectively communicate once you learn all these 12 tenses. The last one in our list of simple present tense is we can express certain non-progressive, I mean non-continuous verbs in simple present tense. For example, I love India. We never say I am loving India. I want coffee. We never say I am wanting a coffee. She needs our help. We never say she is needing our help. So there are certain words you have to use only in simple present tense. Now I am going to show you some example sentence. Look at the screen and you understand what are those words. Now we are going to see present continuous tense. How we are going to use this tense? For three things we can use. What is the first one? The actions which are happening right now. For example, okay, I'm taking the pen and my friend is recording me and he's, oh, he's playing with me. So, now you're all looking at me. I'm teaching you English grammar. So, these are the actions happening right now at the time of speaking. 
to remember. Now you look at your father. Just look at your father. What is he doing? Oh, is he watching TV with you? Okay, he's watching TV. And look at your mother. What is your mom doing? Oh, oh, she is in the kitchen. Okay, your mom is preparing meals. Good, very good. What about your brother and sister? Are they playing with you? Or they are disturbing you? Okay, your brother is disturbing you. So, you just look around you. Just get out of your house and look around. If somebody is walking or crossing your street, look there. And you can express the things which are happening around you in present continuous tense. Let us look at the forms. Which verb form we have to use for present continuous tense? I've already told you there are four forms of verb. Verb 1, verb 2, verb 3 and verb plus ing. So, you know all the pronouns. I, we, you, he, she, it and they. We are going to use verb plus ing for present continuous tense. But there is a catch. We should also add an auxiliary verb before the main verb. I mean before the verb plus ing. What are they? I am. We are. You are. He is. She is. It is. They are. Okay. For example, I am eating cake and we are eating cakes. You are eating a cake. He is eating a cake. She is eating a cake. They are eating a cake and it is eating a cake. So, we are using three auxiliary verbs. Am is exclusive for I and R for we you and they and is is used only with he she it or you can replace those pronouns with any names first we saw the first usage of present continuous tense the first usage of present continuous tense is to express actions happening at the moment i mean at the time of speaking and what about the second one? Second one, we can express the actions which are going around the present. For example, a couple of days ago, I started reading a book. I am still reading. You may ask me, sir, you are just talking with us. How you you are reading a book right now? Right now in the sense, not at the time of speaking, but recent days I am reading a book. And I will take another three four days to complete it. So this is my current project. One of my friends is building a house. Right now he is with me. He is not building his house right now. But he started building the house two months ago. And he will take another two or three months to complete building the house. So like that, you just think of the situation around you. You are watching TV right now. Nowadays you are learning grammar. This week you are learning a certain portion of your book. So this way we can express things which are happening around the present. I mean what we are doing in recent days or nowadays. Let us look at some examples. I am reading a book. We are fighting against pollution. And third usage of present continuous tense is to express future event. You are going to do something, you can express the same in present continuous tense. In simple present tense, we saw that we could express the things which are fixed, fixed events, timetables, schedules. But here, if you have a plan to do something this evening or tomorrow or coming weeks, you can express it in present continuous tense. The only difference is that's a fixed event, timetable, I mean the simple present tense. Whereas present continuous tense, that you have an intention of doing something, you have a plan to do something. 
I am attending a birthday party this evening. My uncle is arriving at the airport in Chennai tomorrow. Our team is playing a cricket match this Sunday. So like this, you can express the things which you have planned to do in the near future, this evening, tomorrow, next week and coming days. Now, let us think. For instance, what are you going to do this evening? You are going to shop this evening. What are you going to do tomorrow? What are you going to do this Sunday? If you think this way, you can express all those intentions, plans in present continuous tense. So these are the three usages of present continuous tense. First one, the actions which are happening right now at the time of speaking. How you can practice this? If you are at the market, just look around the market. Your vendor is calling you and somebody is uh, shouting and selling something and somebody is just crossing you and you see a friend just coming with you. So think around this situation and you can express it in present continuous tense. So first usage, you can always practice wherever you are. If you are in a classroom, if you are in a playground, if you are in a, a theater, if you are in a shop, just look around you and see what is happening there. And what is he doing? What is she doing? What are they doing? You can express all these activities in present continuous tense. And second usage, the actions which are happening recent days, nowadays. For example, your street friends are playing shuttlecock and your father is going to your new job and your mother is trying out new dishes this week. So these are the recent events even though this is not happening at the time of speaking. The last one is that the future actions that you have planned to do. If you have planned to do something this evening, tomorrow, next week, you can express that in present continuous tense. Now we are going to see simple past tense. Yesterday, last week, last month, a year ago, couple of years ago, now you have heard me listing out past times like yesterday, day before yesterday. So, Whenever you want to express something happened in the past, you can express it in simple past tense using these adverbs of time. Now let us look at the screen. I am going to read few sentences for you. I washed my clothes yesterday. We watched a movie last week. They visited Taj Mahal last month. You called me two days ago. I studied 7th standard last year. She learned swimming a few years ago. You and I left the place after the event. If you look at all these examples, yesterday, last week, last month, two days ago, last year, a few years ago, after the event, all these Adverbs of time indicates a past time. So, you have to use simple past tense with a past time. Okay, now I am going to ask a few questions. Did you have your breakfast this morning? Did you do your homework yesterday? Did you go to shop yesterday? Did you go to your uncle's house last month? And did you fight with anybody? So, all my questions started with did you, did you, did you? And ended with last month, yesterday, last week, a couple of days ago. So, these adverbs of time indicates a past event, whether something has happened to you or to me or to anyone. 
we can use all these adverbs of time to indicate a past event. This is the first usage of simple past tense. Let us look at the second usage. Sometimes we can use simple past tense sentences without adverbs of time. For example, I learned to ride my bicycle in my village. I did not mention any time. When I learned, when I say I learned to ride bicycle in my village indicates that I learned bicycle when I stayed in my village. Even though I do not directly mention the time, the place tells us the time when I was there and learned bicycle. And look at the next one. Priya learnt cooking from her grandmother. Here I did not mention any time, any place, but a person. Priya learnt cooking from her grandmother. If you look at this example, I do not mention time and place, but a person. So this statement tells us that she learnt cooking from her grandmother while she was with her grandmother. So, the second usage of simple past tense is we can express past events without mentioning time. Like mentioning a place, it may indicate the time when you were there. Or a person, you learned something from a person, it means that you learned that thing from that person in the particular time when you were with them. So, there are two usages, one with indication of past time, another without any indication of time, but with some context, past context. Let us look at the forms, verb 1, verb 2, verb 3 and verb plus ing. Which form of verb you are going to use to make simple past tense? Verb 2, definitely. And do we need to add any yes like that we did with a simple present tense? No, we do not need. Straight away, we can use second form of the verb. For example, I had, she had, we had. Here, had, I mean, we ate something. I had a cup of coffee. Tenses are very easy, so don't get tensed. Okay? Okay, I'll see you in the next class. And bye.